Hello, good day, welcome back. And you should be very, very excited to be, if you're following the bonus video, to now reach this video. And the reason why is because today we're gonna try and wrap up the application. We should be able to, um, and this to-do application using Angular. And the whole reason for this again was just to show why Angular. You know, we try to do a to-do application and we try to do it without Angular or any kind of framework or JavaScript library. And we had a lot of work to do with, you know, that sort of thing, document that element and all this other thing. And you could see all our code here, right? And I'm gonna try and demonstrate that I think Angular makes this a little bit more understanding. But before we do that, let's do this. Let's bring up our Git control here. We have a file that's modified. And we're gonna say, um, we're gonna comment and say, this is work in progress maybe, and but it's kind of fully working, okay? That's gonna be our comment. Um, you can put any comment you want. And so I've kind of saved where we are there. And then um, what I wanna do is I actually want to now um, do something slightly different. Um, here, if you look, we have the script tag and then all our code was in um, between the script tag. And um, this is not so great because we have basically in this file, we have JavaScript and HTML in this HTML file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut, I selected all the code and I cut it out. I could see that though, it just leave my script tag empty. And what I'm gonna do is create a new file and I'm gonna call it app.js. And you can call it pretty much anything that JS for JavaScript. And I'm gonna paste my code here. And so I literally just cop copy the code from over there and then I paste it here. I'm gonna try beautify and see if it, yeah, it didn't do anything, this sucks. All right. So uh, bracket is kind of cool to be able to do what we're doing here, um, but you know, I always say the, it's just a pain in terms of it doesn't give you some nice um, thing. But anyway, uh, it's, it's working fine. So uh, you don't have to reformat or anything like that. Um, you know. uh, yeah. anyway. So I've just copied my code literally and pasted it here and I'm gonna save it. And it's complaining about a few things, expected function, you know, or expected exactly one space between this and that. <laughs> Don't worry about all that stuff. It's saying that I expected a space here, for example. Um, but it doesn't mean that's always wrong. Um, you know, uh, we'll, I'll close it. It's complaining about some stuff. Um, you know, you have some coding convention that's trying to follow and uh, you can modify that stuff. And so let's go back to our index at HTML. So now we don't have the JavaScript code here. Our, our application actually wouldn't work at this point, right? None of the saving and clearing and you know all this stuff, it's not, it's not working, right? It's, it's gone back to what it was doing before. When you hit save, it kind of refreshed, but then there's actually nothing to save because there's no code. So what we can do is we can still, we still use a script tag, but we use it differently now. We add the attribute here called source. And so we set it to our, our file is in this app.js file. As you can see, it tried to suggest that for me. So now, all we're doing is saying this, we still have script tag, but now we're saying our source is external, right, in this file. And it's in this file here. And then the result should be the exact same. I'm gonna save that, and I go over here, and if I refresh, now when I do this, and I do thing, it should work just as before. And let me just try that again, and I put it to complete, and when I save, this should be we started dip and so everything seems like it's working fine and I do edit and then I can change this and I can say save and I can edit this guy and I could say clear and so everything seems to be working just fine you know edit um, yeah uh, there's only one thing that seemed to have been broken this is not being set to um, to whatever it was here. So I don't know why that is, but that shouldn't have happened because of the code. The code, uh, just moving the code um, doesn't change that stuff. So edit, selected index. Uh, oh, when I do clear, that's fine. But then when I do edit, uh, oh, this should be set to to do that progress. Ah. Ah, this means this was a bug in there since yesterday. Ah, I didn't notice that. Okay, so now um, once we refresh here, um, I add something and I put it as completed and I say save. And then I put something else and I said in progress, I say save. If I try to edit this 
in progress one, it should change at the top. If I try to edit this one, it should change at the top, and it does. So, okay, so that was a bug that we added in our code. All right, I'm glad we tested that and fixed it. But as you can see, I edited the code outside in this app.js file, and it works perfectly fine. Sorry, good. The reason why I wanted to do that was to try and simplify things in terms of when you start coding. Um, I had to introduce this idea because now we want to pull in the AngularJS library. And um, when we pull in AngularJS, you can go to the website angularjs.org and it will tell you how to, you know, how you can learn about Angular, you could download it and all this other good stuff, right? It'll give you a simple example here of, you know, you use script. And I told you before, I told the script tab, you can put it in the head part or you can put it in the bottom of your document, but we're going to put it in the bottom of a document. And we're actually going to essentially try the same little example that they have here to make sure that we install it and have it working. But let's just go with this for now. And I'm going to create a new application here, and I'm going to call it test.html. And uh, let's copy the code and see if we can get this to work. So I'm going to copy this and paste it. And what it says is this, don't worry, I tell you ignore this doc type. Don't worry about that. So HTML, it has this attribute called ng app. And ng app is not a standard HTML attribute that you would find in the W3C documentation here for the HTML tag. Uh, HTML, blah, 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 HTML tag. Um, you wouldn't find <coughs> that anywhere. This ng um, you see a model level directive ng app and this ng model right there. This is provided by the AngularJS library um, framework. And so this is how you include it, right? We did this just minutes ago in our application where we put our script in an external file, app.js. Well, now we're just pulling in a script that's stored on a server somewhere, right? So that's why instead of just saying, if I download it, I would say, oh, just include angular min.js or whatever. Or if I put it in some directory, I could have put, downloaded, put it in a directory, and I could just reference that. But now it's stored on a server, so I use HTTPS, or in this third, HTTPS means secure, but if it wasn't a secure server, I could just use HTTP. So basically, it's just where it's stored, right? The path to it, whether it's on a server or it's locally. And then you see the same thing, head and a body and a div tag. You have a label tag, nothing fancy, input tag of type text. And the only thing new that you haven't seen before is this ng-model. And again, this is an Angular specific thing they call directive. So think of those directives as attributes. But with Angular, the reason they call them directive and they're just attributes here is because Angular directive could come in the form of an attribute, an element, or a comment, a comment, right? So um, just keep that in mind. So Angular has to have, have a number of attributes. Some are elements, some are uh, attributes, and some can be comments. Comments are rarely used, and you could create your own attributes, right? But we'll we'll see that in the angle in the course, the regular part of the tutorial when we talk about Angular, where we learn about Angular. So I'm not going to spend too much time because this is just a teaser video, and I'm not teaching you Angular here. So here's our model, and then we have a model called your name, and then we reference it the value here in hello. So if we try to load this up, there's hello, there's the thing, and as I type, notice what happens. What if I type in this text box goes into this model or variable and then that is being I can get the value out here I don't have to do any document that get element by ID I didn't even have to say oh I want to give this an ID and look it up and type it angular is doing that behind the scenes Okay, so right away immediately you see one of the advantages of using angular So what I'll do is I'll copy the script tag and I'll go back to our application and say, oh, we want to use Angular. And I'll put it in first before our application loads, because um, before it loads our application file, um, because we want to pull that in and then do our stuff. And then one of the things that we had to do was put here on the HTML was ng app. Now you could put that any pretty much any place. Um, we don't need this ID, you know, ID for progress and ID for uh, the description because we see. And you know, we certainly don't need name. Uh, we didn't really see the name being used, but uh, it could have been used. Um, what we're gonna do is say ng model model equals progress, 
ng model equals description, right? Where is that? Oh, I did it already. Right? And I have a placeholder, which is nothing new. Okay. And um, with this alone, I should expect that if I go in this paragraph tab here, and I expand a uh, description. But, or actually let's make this, uh, yeah, well, we can leave the description. Um, if I go over here, I start typing something here. Oh, okay. Well, I could see that our description didn't evaluate. So that tells me at all, it doesn't know what this is and it didn't um, load my file. So uh, let's see, what am I missing? ng app yeah i look like i have everything um, i have ng app there and i bring in the angular module so what is going on oh there it is it had to refresh so anyway there it is now it's gone so if i type this now i'm typing here and you could see it's showing up at the top i didn't have to do any fancy looking up and the same thing if i put progress here i save and hopefully this refreshes uh, it's not refreshing so that's why okay and then i start doing drop down you could see as i select things here it's changing up there right so right away you see some of the benefit is that we don't have to do this document that model thing well one of the things you can do is we can actually go over here in angular in, in um, our source file and we can actually start writing some some code um, Angular supports something called what's called a module. So we could say create a var app. I'll mean, uh, use the name application module interchangeably. So I'll call it and it's an Angular, and there it is that module. And then I could give my module name, say my to do, for example, is the name I'll give it. And I'll say it doesn't have any dependency. This doesn't make any sense now because you don't know Angular, but I don't think. And then I'll go back to my HTML here and I'll say that on my app, before my app didn't add a name, right? So now I'll say my to-do. Notice this is the exact same name that I use in my app here, the string. I'm just using it and say, this is my thing. Now, one of the other things Angular support is something called a controller. And again, this is not teaching you Angular here. So I'm gonna say ng.controller is equals to my um, to, to do controller right and then in code I'm gonna create a controller so I'm gonna say for um, app I don't have the app that controller and to do how do I put a CTRL and my to do controller is a function that takes something called a scope so all I'm doing is I'm providing I'm calling this app that I created here, or this module I created, I'm calling, I'm gonna use those interchangeably, I'm calling the control method on it, passing two things in. The name of the control is a string and a function for it to call back, okay? And once I do that, because in code I say that oh, I'm using this app, and then in one of the nested um, elements, I said this is a controller because my app could have multiple controller controllers and I could have controllers that are responsible for different sections of my application or different set of tabs, right? So I could have a controller for this form and you could nest controllers. Like Angular is really crazy in terms of how you could nest things. So we can learn that in the regular tutorial if we haven't already. If you're watching this at the end of our Angular stuff, this makes sense. I'm not going to spend too much time. But if this is really a teaser for people who really wanted to know why Angular. So the assumption is you haven't really learned Angular just yet and you know why we're using Angular. So I'm just going to show you why. And I'm not going to really explain everything because this is not a tutorial for Angular. This is just to kind of show you the benefit we get. So my controller, you know, here is to do controller. And since my ng model, uh, there's this description model that comes inside this controller. What Angular is going to do is that look up the value for description inside this controller. And if it doesn't find it, it go outside and look up in the parent scope, which is called the root scope in this case. But what I want to do is if I wanted to set a value for description, I can say that scope, that description is equals to hello, for example. And you can see that if I save this and I go back here, this is description is hello. So that's how I set the value for that. 
And if I want um, my progress to have a default value, I say scope that, that progress. So set that to the string zero, and then now there it is. And then I set it to one, and I save, and there it is. You can see it's changing in the background. So uh, two, one, and it's changing accordingly. Okay, now I think there's a way to, all right, never mind that. Uh, I think you can use like a, a object with key value, but never mind. All right, so now I can, I can, so I have control of my front end. So I've linked up my front end with my back end already in terms of setting these value here. What about? I, okay, sorry for the interruption, but I have to correct this. During the recording, I said that how we cut up front end with back end. We're not using the back end. This example does not use a back end. I could post more videos along this, but this bonus showing how we do that, but this video is not doing it. What I should have said is we open up the UI control with the JavaScript, and that's still all front end, okay? So that's all I was talking about, UI control with JavaScript and the JavaScript with the UI control. That's it. And these value here, what about these methods, the click and clear? Well, let's just do just a, let's just move this these guys inside of here. Uh, let's just move those in there. And so, you know, Let's just move. Okay, I gotta copy and cut cut this out. So I'm gonna cut this out, put it in here, paste it, and there's my formatting thing again. Uh, it's not being formatted properly. So I have that. Then let's just put this function um, save in there. Copy. Put it in there. Paste it. Um, Let's try and format it a little bit. And why don't I just put all these functions in here? I guess I could I could do that. Um, so mm, I'll just do them one at a time. Uh, it's clearer that way. It's easier that way. Um, let's do the next one we're gonna do is clear. Let's do clear clear. There is an easy one to, to put in there. So let's do cut and let's put clear in there. Paste it, put it in there. Oh, tab over. All right, so what happened when we clear input, when we call this function? Well, we don't wanna, well, we don't have to worry too much about prevent default right now. Um, so uh, let, let's comment that out. Let's see if we're gonna need it later on. We, we know that we don't have to do this looking up like this this way anyway because um, the way we access it is by saying scope that progress you know that description for example is equals to empty string and then scope that progress equals to you know the string zero um, and then but how, just as our, our variable, you know, uh, is being exposed on scope. So when Angular look for this model, it looks up in this controller and look on the scope for this controller. The same thing with the methods clear input is it's, it's looking, um, you know, on in the scope for this controller for this definition of this function. So let's do just that and here, if we wanted to pass in the event, it would actually be dollar sign event if I remember correctly. But I don't think we will need it. Does we will check and see if we actually need it. And so I just have to say that our, this function is on my scope. So I say scope that clear input is equals to this function that has no name. And again, if we did the JavaScript stuff, you'll see that our, this is just anonymous function that we save in reference to it here. And so this gives us exactly what we want in terms of being able to clear stuff. So let's see if this works. So uh, this didn't save, let me save it. Let me go over here, refresh. And then I'm gonna change this to something and I'm gonna say clear. Okay, and so it didn't call it. Um, why didn't it call it? So scope is scope that clear input is equals to function. 
event and then we do scope that destination description equals that and then scope that progress equals to that and edit there so i hope i didn't make a mistake so let me comment out some of these functions that i'm not sure yet if i've made a mistake when i copy them or paste them or whatever and i'm certainly gonna comment out these guys because they're not in our thing yet um, they were working fine outside, but I don't know what happened. Something, I either made a coding error somewhere. So scope that. Okay, progress. We want to initialize that to zero. To zero. Um, we could put it to one so we can see it or clear stuff. So progress, scope that progress equals. So when I call, see edit, to do's. Okay, let's see. Let's try again. So save, refresh. Okay. So this is hello, this is in progress. So this means that this work. So now our clear inputs should be working. So we click this. Huh, clear inputs is not working. Why isn't clear inputs working? Let me see. If this is getting called, I can easily check it by saying alert hello. And that's how you do some debugging to see why your stuff is not getting called. So, uh, okay, so it's not getting called. Um, let me see, maybe it's because I have, oh, ah, silly me, silly me. Uh, I'm going over to Angular and I didn't do things the Angular way, which is, well, here we, when we want to read the value from this, in these inputs, we just use ng model. For click, it's not on click, it's ng click, and ng click, <laughs> all right? And so this is how we tell Angular, you know, bind to um, the click events, right? And so now I'm going to save, and then I go back, refresh, and now when I click clear, um, it runs my thing, and then it clears it. Okay, so we see that's working. So um, I already, oh, I didn't save, save that. Um, so refresh, and then if I click clear, it clears it. Okay, so we know this is working. And we could start off our stuff by this being initialized properly. There's nothing in there. And when we clear it, we do those things. All right. So clear is working. It's clearly working fine. <laughs> no pun intended. But what was the other one we want to do? We really want to be able to save things, right? So let's just use take our save method next. And we're going to copy that. Cut it. And we're going to paste it. Let's paste it on top of clear because um, we already finished with clear, so we wanted the stuff we are working on to be closest to the top, and we'll just keep pushing stuff down. So again, we'll do the same thing. We'll say, you know, this is scope that, you know, save to do is equal to a function that takes this. Now notice, um, when we were over here and we did clear, our screen didn't refresh, okay? And uh, hence why we'll, we'll see if we need this actually call prevent the fault here we're going to see and so again we don't need all of this see how many lines it took us to get the value all we, have, we need to do here now is say scope that get description scope that progress that's all we need to do we didn't have to we cut out like four lines there already um, because you know our description is on the scope and we can access it all right um, so any variable we say ng, well, okay, you, if you learn this from the ng tutorial, you'll know. All right. So let's save this and let's see if it actually works. No, we're, or to do's, we should put that on our scope too because we want to access that, um, you know, on the HTML as we can see how we're going to do it later on. All right. So we're going to add this to do now when um, we push stuff onto the to do it's actually going to be scope dash to do's and you know scope dash to do's so we're going to be pushing things onto this to do's that is on our scope all right and we don't need to call update um, as you're going to see in a minute, why we don't need to call update. We don't even need this update function, period. We don't need it here when we do. Um, oh, which, which one did I do? Did I call save to do? Yeah. Uh, why is it still here? 
I didn't delete it. Oh, I had already copied it before. Yeah. Crazy. Okay, all right, fine. So uh, we don't need this update um, thing here, um, as you're gonna see. Uh, we're gonna get rid of update because we don't need it. And what we're gonna do is make sure that every time we call, just before we finish, we're gonna say alert um, scope that to do's that linked, right? To make sure so the length is growing and we don't we not keep refreshing like we we had the problem before right so there are we gonna do it bam and we say save and we got one two three right so we see it's incrementing and we didn't have to call this prevent thing angular is doing the right thing which means we didn't have to pass this in we don't have to pass this in we can get rid of this line and so from our html we don't really actually need the event. Now, if you want the event, you can pass it in like I show you here, but we don't actually need the event, right? I was doing the right thing for us by preventing the default behavior of doing that sub submit form submission. We just call our function so that we can take action on it. Now, how are we gonna get our stuff displayed here? Well, uh, actually, we don't even need to look up this, so we no need to have that there. But what we want in this body is we want a number of rows, right? We want TR row. And what we want is some values inside of it, right? We want table data and we want like the number of the thing, right? So why don't we repeat this row? So this is ng repeat, right? Equals to, let's, and the way you use it is you say, let's say to do in to do's. Well, to do is the variable we're going to create now. This ng repeat is going to create us for us, and it's going to iterate through this to do's, which is on our scope. Remember, when Angular looks for this variable, it's going to say, oh, let me see which is the closest controller I have. And it's going to look for the closest controller it's nested in. This thing, this, this variable is nested in, and it's find this, and look on this, the scope for this controller for to do's, which we have done. We have put on this scope this to do's, and we have made sure that our saving, you know, either add stuff onto to do by pushing it on or updating stuff on to do. And we have already seen that, regardless, you're going to see pretty soon, regardless of how your code is accessed, you know, updated in back end or front end on the client from the client or the back end, Angular um, just mirrors updated for us. So, what I mean by that is if you type something in an input box that's on the client, right, it actually updated in JavaScript, which would be the equivalent of updating our scope that progress so we can access it in code when we say save. And similarly, you, could, you see, you saw that when we click clear and we call that JavaScript and it changes the value here for clear, it reflected on the front end all without us having to do it. So it's called two-way binding because Angular put that old update code between if something changed on the controls, change it in the JavaScript. If something changed in the JavaScript, bind it to the control, right? Two-way binding. All right, so you already noticed if you're doing the tutorial. If you're not, don't worry, you're gonna learn it. So now this is the variable we're gonna use to loop through all our to-dos. So as we loop in through our to-dos, well, Angular provides an index variable here for us and that evaluates to what the current index is. The current index would be like zero, one, two, blah, blah. But we want this to say like one. So we want index that one. And let's just even see if this works, right? And so Angular is going to repeat this TR. So Angular is going to produce multiple table row. And then, of course, each one of those table row have a nested table data. So let's just see. So we come over here and let's refresh. And then we're going to do add, save, and oh, uh, there we go. There is our stuff. Oh, I, I, I messed one set close in parentheses. That's uh, uh, curly braces to evaluate. And you can see it's already added one. So it's kind of doing the right thing. It's up to, when we click the save button in the JavaScript, we added stuff to the to-dos list. But because the to-do is exposed on our scope, Angular said, oh, there's, there's variable change in it in JavaScript. Let me redo the front end. And so save, 
and we need to get rid of um you know uh that thing so i, I need to do something here because uh it's not giving me the value i want um uh so in javascript okay i thought we removed the old alert thing where is that coming from oh i didn't save this that's why so every time i every time i add something and i save it it was doing the alert so notice now how things it's actually showing the right thing one two three well if that is working what we need to do is just continue what we're doing here and say we want to do that description so we need to evaluate to do that description and we want to evaluate to do to do that progress right but if you remember from before our progress was really you know this is going to be the number but we kind of really want to look up um you know the value here from here inside this progress label so let's put that on our scope to expose it to our front end so progress labels let me just copy that so i don't mistype it so i really want to look up progress labels and then whatever to do that progress is, that number, look it up in progress label, and then the whole thing I evaluate and show that, okay? And um, let's save this for now. And uh, I should probably save this to make sure that this is saved. There's a little dot here saying that it wasn't saved. This one either. We're not really working on it. This one was just an example, so we can uh, delete this. This was just to um, you know, get our program kind of going so let me delete that. All right. So when I go over here, uh, I really want this. Okay. So when I go over here now and I say bam, 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 and I say save, there we go. Okay. So this guy doesn't look like it's doing my progress part is not looking up stuff as I would want. So what is going on there? Um, to, to, to what is going on so if I do that's one if I set it to one I do save yeah it's not doing what I wanted to do so let's go back and look in the code and see so here is my stuff scope that progress labels yeah so that seems right Pro scope that progress labels and I believe that is right because if I do a test and say you know uh, h2 tag for example ng repeat and then I say equals to t in progress labels for example and then I evaluate what T is, that should give me all my progress labels. And refresh. So yeah, there's my progress labels. There they are. So, um, oh, table data. <laughs> That's why it's, it wasn't rendering properly. I didn't know what that was. <laughs> So it wasn't running for a problem. So the problem wasn't in my Angular code, it was in my HTML code. I was saying, yep. So to do typing errors. All right, save. So now let's refresh that. And then I put stuff in and I say save. And there we go. Complete, save, and there we go. So as you can see, I was taking out the code we had before to render this, we had it in JavaScript and it was, you know, the update, uh, I should have kept it. It was the, oh, I could get, bring it back from over here from the dead. I could bring it back to show you guys what it looked like. Update list then. And we had all kind of problem with it because we had to make sure that oh, we're not in JavaScript and all this other thing. So I'm gonna paste it here. And so this is what it looked like. And so we had to mix like string and 
you know, come up to there and we have I and it, it's just, just a mess and it's easy to make errors. Now, we simply type what we want, which is we want these, you know, uh, elements and then we just escape where we want the value. And then the only new thing we had to really do was say, oh, we use this ng repeat that loops over and then here's a variable and then we use that variable. To me, this is a lot cleaner, a lot cleaner than looking at this thing that did it back in code to me. And then look at here for our, um, say, our save or clear. Look at look what that is. It's three lines. Clear before was more than three lines. I should have kept wrong all that code. Save, same thing. Was a few more lines. Now it's kind of simplified. And so um, let's continue and add the rest of our functionality. What about uh, delete? Let's cut that and put that um, at the top of our stack here. Uh, tab, and then I said delete, and then again, we wanna say scope.delete is equals to a function. And we still wanna pass in the, the index of what we're talking about, but no, we're going to be talking about the scope that to do's that splice, you know, of this index. We don't have to call update <laughs> because once we, we, we change the, the element inside this array, the front end is just going to update that the HTML is just going to update. And so we don't even have to do anything. To, oh, we, we have to add the delete for these guys. So we say table data that, you know, button that ng click when you get a click call delete um, to do with the current index which is uh, sign index All right and um, that's it oh um, but this is delete All right and let's see if this works yes I'll refresh and then that, 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 save and then say delete. Oh. And so uh, that, didn't, that didn't quite work as I expected there. Let me see. Uh, oh, I think I didn't, I didn't save my, my stuff at the back here. Uh, so delete to do. So that's what it's called. Delete to do. Let me copy it. I need to make sure in my HTML I have delete to do. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I shouldn't need to evaluate this. This should work fine. But, oh, let's see. Now uh, maybe I should, I think I have, I have to do that. Uh, so, refresh, that, 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 save, and then delete. Okay, so my delete is not being called. It's probably it's being called because I have the ng click there, but it's not called with a value probably that I want. So uh, let's refresh, save, delete. There we go. All right. And I know this works when I say save, save. I'm terrible. Okay, and there we go. And I could delete any one. Let's delete one in the middle. All right? And I could add another one. I'm going to add with these this time. I'm going to put incomplete. I'll put some with W's. I say complete. And let's delete this completed one here too. So we delete this completed one. That's fine. Let's delete this W one. That's fine. Let's delete this guy. That's fine. We'll delete all of them. All right? So my delete worked fine and I didn't have to do any fancy escaping, which I thought I would have to do, but I didn't have to do any fancy escaping. So again, very easy to do that. And then copy, paste, and then now we want to make this edit button. And we change this to edit. And in code, so let's save this HTML and in code, we go and we grab our edit function. So I can delete this now because I just put it back there to show you guys just how much code that was. 
and I'll grab edit I'll cut it from here and I'll paste it here and it's going to be essentially the same thing which is where I'm going to say scope that edit is equals to a function that takes an index okay now really I should put a semicolon at the end of this because this is really like a statement you know with a equal thing blah 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 when you learn the JavaScript it's gonna make sense all right but you see it was working fine without it and so edit I create a new to do I get the index from my scope that to do I set this editing to be true which is these variable here they're not on the scope this da 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 and then I don't need to look up anything like I was doing before I don't have to do this I don't have to do this I simply say scope that description is equals to this and scope that that progress is equals to that and that's all I do to, to say to um, um, editing something notice we remove line remove line that's the thing you end up typing less and that's easy for your application in terms of remembering it, understanding, maintaining it. And of course, since I type less, we took two old videos to get our list of working. I don't have the first video where we kind of set up the HTML, but about to get our list JavaScript working, that was two videos, part two and part three. And here in JavaScript, in, 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 in Angular, and I'm talking a whole lot, I'm doing more tutorial about Angular than I initially planned to said I would gonna do. And we already have all the same functionality. So let's do save and let's edit this one. Notice that. And if I change this to no, FFFF and incomplete, change it. It's exact same complete thing and it's finished. We are back to exactly where we started. But Angular gives you more than that, that if we had to do it in the other thing, um, oh, uh, I think I made a mistake with my HTML. Just looking at my table here, it seems like I have an extra cell. So uh, I actually wanted to put these two in the same cell as opposed to separate cells. And so that's the only thing that I should do. All right. But other than that, same exact same thing. That was more my mistake in how I coded up the thing than anything else, right? And there you go. So that's why I say you should be really excited about this because your application, um, you, how many new things you have to learn for Angular? You put this ng happening, put this ng controller, use ng click, ng model, use ng repeat, use index, about six new things. And then in the code, you use create a module and then a controller, which is just the name for a function. You just call a function with a string and the anonymous function. And then within it, you pass a scope variable, which Angular gives you. You can hang on all your stuff that you're gonna, you wanna expose to the front, you hang it on to the scope. The stuff you don't want the front to have access to, like edit index and stuff, we didn't add it to the scope. And that was it and our code is i can tell you this is coming in at what um uh, if i space it out i mean i could take out the spaces because that doesn't really matter but uh this looks like you know 46 line of code and then i still have the other set of code over here on my screen i can tell you that it's sent to something line of code with the same type of spacing right so uh 30 lines removed and not to mention your HTML, I think, look a little bit more, uh, pretty much look exactly the same. I mean, you know, you added a few lines here, just repeat and for this, but uh, the other one, we actually look up something and then loop over it, but that was done in code. You didn't know what was going to be here. Here, at least you have some idea what's going to be here, even if you don't know what the values are going to be. So I think this video is probably running into a little too long, so I'll end it here, but this is it. That's, that's the end. And this is why I'm going to use Angular because 
uh, this type of flexibility and being able to do things quickly and doing these things very nicely. Okay, and we'll see more about it about creating directors and there's so many things you can do. The modules, you can depend on other modules. We can have modules that allow us to send things to the back end and do animation and thought the list goes on and on and on. But I hope this whets your appetite now to accept Angular and want to learn it. All right, thanks. See you in another bonus video or teaser. Bye.